after completing the air conduction and bone conduction tests, as well as any masking necessary for either one, you can then determine what type of hearing loss the patient has. There's conductive hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, and mixed hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss can be caused by something like a blockage in the ear canal, an infection, or a malfunction in the middle ear bones. In that case, air conduction is elevated and bone conduction is normal. There's a 15 decibel or greater difference apart from each other. For a sensory neural hearing loss, it's typically caused by damaged hair cells in the inner ear, or the cochlea, or a mass in the cochlear nerve or lesion, which would then be retrocochlear. Sensory neural hearing loss is when air conduction and bone conduction are both elevated and within 10 decibels of each other. A mixed hearing loss is a combination of conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. It is when air conduction and bone conduction are elevated and there's a 15 decibel or greater difference apart from each other. After completing your threshold search, you can then move on to speech testing. One type of speech test is called the speech detection threshold or the SDT. It is a test that typically uses recorded spondy words to determine the lowest intensity level at which the patient can detect words. You want to present a spondy word to the test ear at 20 decibels SL to their pure tone average, so 20 decibels above their three frequency PTA for that ear. If the patient does not respond, increase the intensity of the word in the test ear by five decibels. If the patient does respond, you want to decrease the intensity of the word in the test ear by 10 decibels. You want to repeat the process until the patient responds at the same word intensity level at least 50% of the time. This test can also be completed using monitored live voice. The next type of speech testing is called the speech recognition threshold test or the SRT. This is also a test that typically uses recorded spondy words to determine the lowest intensity level at which the patient can understand and repeat the words back. You want to present a spondy word to the test ear at 20 dB SL to the pure tone average to 20 decibels above the three tone pure tone average for that ear. If the patient does not respond, increase the intensity of the word in the test ear by five decibels. If the patient does respond, increase the intensity of the word in the test ear by 10 decibels. You want to repeat this process until the patient repeats the word correctly at the same intensity level at least 50% of the time. This can also be completed using monitored live voice. If masking is needed for the speech recognition threshold, then you want to present the masking noise to the non-test ear at the presentation level of the test ear minus inner oral attenuation for that transducer minus 10 decibels plus a correction factor of 10 decibels and present the word to the test ear at threshold. This is also called the Studebaker method. If the patient does not respond or repeats the word incorrectly, you want to increase the intensity of the word in the test ear by 5 decibels. If the patient responds, increase the intensity of the masking noise in the non-test ear by 5 decibels. Repeat the process until the patient responds the same intensity level while increasing the masking noise by 5 decibels three times in a row. Again, the plateau method. The next type of speech test is called the word recognition test. This tests the brain's ability to process information. Word recognition is a test that typically uses recorded sentences to determine the percentage at which the patient can understand and repeat words. You want to present a carrier sentence followed by a one syllable word to the test ear at 40 dB SL to their speech recognition threshold so 40 decibels above what their SRT was in that particular ear, depending on if you reach the limits of the audiometer. If the patient does not respond or repeats the word incorrectly, you mark it as incorrect. If the patient responds and repeats the word correctly, you mark it as correct. You want to repeat the process until at least 25 words are presented to each ear. Sometimes the provider will also like to get a binaural 
word recognition score. And in this case, you can present the words to both ears at the same time, even at different intensity levels. You can also complete this test by using monitored live voice. If word recognition masking is needed, you want to present the masking noise to the non-test ear at the presentation level of the test ear, minus 20 decibels, and present the test ear at 40 decibels SL of the test ear SRT. So 40 decibels above the SRT for the left ear. If the patient does not respond or repeats the word incorrectly, you want to mark it as incorrect. If the patient repeats the word correctly, mark as correct. Repeat the process until at least 25 words are presented to each ear. In the studio software, on the top of the screen, you can see different tabs that correspond to different tests that you can perform. The SRT tab brings you to the screen in order to record the speech recognition threshold. Down on the bottom, you have two tabs, one with a wrench where you can calibrate your signal if needed. By clicking on the folder, you select your speech material, and then you can select the calibration tone from the drop down menu. Hit play, and by clicking on the down arrow, you can then slide the slider to calibrate your speech material. Once you're ready to record their scores, you can click on the W tab, and this drop down menu has a list of words. So for the SRT, we want to use spondy words, and you can change your intensity level right here on the side. You can either use the slider, the arrow keys on the screen, or the arrow keys on your keyboard. Once you're ready to present, you can hit the play button here, or press the space bar, and it will present a word. If the patient gets the word correct, you hit the correct button. You can also use the play button on the screen here too. If the patient does not get the word correct, you hit the incorrect key. Once you record the score of at least 50% correct at that particular level, you can move on to the other ear. This ear, because of the presentation level, needs masking. So we want to make sure that we present the masking tone on the right ear at 45 decibels and the words can start at a level of 65 dB on the left side. So once we present the word, if it's correct, you mark correct. If it is incorrect, then you mark incorrect. Once you've completed any necessary masking for the SRT, you can then move on to the word recognition scores. You want to click on the WR on the top of the screen to change over to the Word Recognition tab. Down in the bottom right hand corner, you again want to select the W tab and that will display your word list. You can change the ears that you want to present to right here. You can change your speech material by clicking on the folder. And the drop down menu will show you a list of words that you can pick from. So you want to present the presentation of the words at 40 decibels above the SRT for each ear. In this case, on the right side, we would use 90 decibels. You can again either present the words by hitting the play button or by pressing the spacebar key. Once you mark if it is correct or incorrect, the word will display in this area up here underneath your presentation levels and you will also see the percentage correct out of how many words you've presented so far. If you want to move on to the next word after you score it, you can use your F9 and your F10 keys on the keyboard. You can also use the F7 and F8 keys on the keyboard to mark correct for F7 and incorrect for F8. You will want to continue the process of marking correct or incorrect for at least 25 words on each side. 
for this left ear, we need to mask just like we masked for the SRT. So in this case, if we were to present 40 dB SL on the left, that would be at 105 decibels on the left ear. That may be too loud for the patient to tolerate and it may be uncomfortable. So use your discretion as to the presentation level for that ear. If we were to present at 95 decibels and that was a comfortable level for the patient on the left side, we would then want to mask at 75 decibels on the right side. So to start the masking, you press on the masking button here. And now you can see that it placed 75 inside the brackets and that shows you the, the masking level. You would then follow the same process and mark at least 25 words, correct or incorrect. You can see on the graph that it plots for you an unmasked right symbol for the word recognition on the right side percentage. And on the left side, you have a masked word recognition symbol. 